Hi guys, Jessica here. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how I retouch and color edit this portrait. Real quick guys, before we start the tutorial, this video was sponsored by Squarespace. You guys know as a photographer, it's really important for me to have my work and brand displayed professionally online. Squarespace really makes it easy to do. You can do things like claim a domain, you can build a website, you can market your brand, and it's done through their all-in-one platform. It's really easy to use. They have a lot of beautiful templates for a lot of different projects. So even if you're not doing photography, you still have a lot of options. And you can also create an online store to sell products like presets, which is what I currently do on my website. I do it through them. Or if you want to sell a service, you can also do that. And if you ever run into an issue, they have 24-7 award-winning customer support that's always there to help. So it's just, it's all in one and it's really easy to use and it's, it takes the intimidation out of making a website. And that's why I recommend it to not only my viewers, but also to my close friends. Um, you guys can check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you guys are ready, check out squarespace.com slash Jessica to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Let me know what you guys think of it. And with that being said, let's get straight into the video. So first things first, this is a raw file and I've got this open into camera raw and Photoshop. Now, uh, I do think it's important to shoot in raw. There's a lot of, a lot of benefits. If your photo is not a raw file, you're not gonna see this window. So what happened is I had a folder with, with this image. I double clicked it and it opened directly into this panel. Again, it's called camera raw. So that is where I'm gonna be doing the first couple of edits. Now I'm doing this just to add a little bit of a base, you know, tweak the colors just a little bit before we officially open it into Photoshop. I definitely think this panel is really useful. I'm sure if you are shooting in RAW and you've opened this in Photoshop, you maybe you just, you know, closed out of it or you just bypassed it. I used to do that, but it really is useful in setting a good foundation. You can tweak colors, do little adjustments before opening it into Photoshop, like before it makes its grand entrance on the red carpet. Now, the first step is to bump up the shadows. So I'm just, I just try to bring back a little bit of those details like for instance, in this hair area over here. The next thing that I like to do is bump up the clarity. Now, I don't like to do this too much. I'm not trying to sharpen the image or add a huge amount of clarity like this. Uh, I think something subtle works. And I think the purpose of me going into the camera raw panel is again, to do very subtle edits. You don't wanna, you don't wanna edit the photo right here. You know what I mean? Um, unless, that's your, unless that's your thing, God bless you. <laughs> I, I, could, I couldn't. Um, I'm very indecisive. So next thing we want to do is go on over to the profile corrections. Now this just g gets rid of any distortion. I'm, I was shooting this with a 24 to 70 lens. So there was a little bit of vignetting as you can see around the edges. Again, it just gets rid of um, the distortion, some of that. If you prefer that type of look, you can definitely keep that. And then I'm going to go to HSL, Hue, Saturation, and Luminance. And what I'm going to do now is really change up the colors in the background because the colors that I want to add are not going to apply well with these saturated greens. So I want to change that just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is start with the hue, focusing on yellows, greens, aquas, a little bit of the, the blues right now. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is toggle the yellow and what I want to do is just lower this to about 18 and then as far as the green goes I'm lowering that all the way and as you can see it already made such a huge difference pay attention maybe over here and as you can see I'm toggling that and let me show you guys the other side what it does so I'm toggling this back and forth aquas I'm lowering that as well and I'm going to toggle this back and forth so you guys can see the difference that that, that it's making and then let it, let's head on over to the saturation. What I want to do now is just bump the yellows up very slightly to about plus four. The greens as well, plus, let's do plus like 26. And as you guys can see, I just want to toggle that back and forth so you guys can see again what that is doing. Now the reason I'm saturating it a little bit more is because 
I, I want the colors to stick a little bit better, like my adjustment layers in the future. Future Jessica wants to cover herself. Make sure we, all the bases are covered. Cause she's gotta win this game. She gotta pay the bills. <laughs> okay. Bad joke, bad joke. Baseball reference, I didn't, I don't, I've never been to a baseball game, but I want to. Uh, and the last one is luminance. And let's just bump the yellows up. Luminance just kind of add, adds brightness. I'm gonna be increasing it for both the yellows and the greens. And let me show you guys that so far. So that was before and that's after. Last thing that we're gonna do in this window here, the raw window, is I'm gonna go on over to calibration and we're only gonna toggle the green primary. Now the hue, I'm going to set it to negative 24 and I want to saturate it to about 13. I don't know, I just really wanted the greens to pop out more because I feel like the colors will, will go on better. And don't worry too much about the skin tone. I know right here, you know, we have some yellow seeping through, but we're gonna fix that um, in Photoshop when we open this up. So I think this is looking pretty good as a base. Again, let me show you guys a full before and after just in camera raw. So that's before, that's after. And then we're gonna go ahead and open this in Photoshop. Oh, hey, you guys made it. Welcome back. And now we are officially in Photoshop. The first thing I'm going to do is retouch this image. If you wanna watch me do it, feel free. If not, I'm gonna have a timestamp to where you can fast forward to the actual color editing portion of this. So without further ado, I'm going to use my frequency separation action and start retouching this image before we apply all the layer adjustments. So that wraps up the retouching portion. This is the before and this is after. Now, if you're wondering how I retouch this, I used a technique called frequency separation. I'm going to have a link in the description if you wanna learn how to do it. I was gonna try to retouch the hands, but then I realized I hadn't come to a point in my life where I retouch hands, so. And I'm not that good at it. I didn't wanna ruin anything, so I'm like, well, just keep it as is. It looks, it looks good, it's fine. So now we're gonna get started with the color editing portion of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a new group, name it color edit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just tweak the skin tone, make it all cohesive, just because I feel like there's a little bit of redness in some areas and it's not matching all the way through. So what I'm gonna do is go to layer, new adjustment layer and then gradient map. And I've already created this nude, peachy type of gradient. And I was trying to find the words to say, but you know, my vocabulary <laughs> these days. So this is the color palette. And I'm gonna go ahead and press okay. And then what I wanna do is go from normal to color. And then as you can see, it tends the entire photo. So what we wanna do is just mask out her skin. 
So what you want to do is invert this mask. So we're going to flip it. We're going to hide everything. So just press Command I and then it goes back to normal. So I'm going to take a brush and as you guys can see, the mask is black. So what you want to do is use the opposite of that, which is white in this case. And we're going to choose what shows through the mask by simply coloring on this white color. So anything that you paint on here is gonna show through if you're using white on a black mask. Hopefully I'm, I'm not confusing anybody. So we're gonna go and just bump this opacity up. Let's just do 100 for now so you guys can kind of just see. And I'm just coloring. And as you can see, the mask we just created shows through only in the parts that I'm coloring with this white foreground color. I know some people bust out the pen tool and try to do this. I'm <laughs> like, I'm not trying to do the pen tool. If you make a mistake for any reason, go on over with the black color to erase. Also one thing as well, I don't want the eyes to be affected. So I'm going over that as well. There we go. So you're going to get something that looks like this and all you have to do now is just lower this opacity and there it is. Look at that. Look at that difference. And again, we're just trying to, you know, correct the skin tone. Maybe there's discoloration for some reason. You can also have it a little bit more subtle just by lowering the opacity even more. So it just depends on what you're really looking for. So now that we've done that. And also, by the way, you guys, there are so many different ways of doing this. This is just one way that I prefer to do it. Let's go on over to layer, new adjustment layer, black and white. We're going to make sure that this tint is checked off. And we're going to bump up the reds to about 200. And then yellows, we're just going to decrease that. Okay, we're okay. I guess I selected all the way. Okay, so uh, then what you want to do is just set this to soft light and then decrease the opacity. And let me show you guys what that did. And then what you want to do is go on over to curves, so layer, new adjustment layer, and then curves. And I drew this curves layer, so hopefully I can redo it here. So it's just a simple curves layer going upwards and then going, going almost back down. Just like my, if it was my life, it would be like this, like, Oh, Jessica had a good day. <laughs> Not the next day. You only get one. So, so that's how it's looking. Me and my bad jokes, right? Just like, I got to add them in there. I mean, you sprinkle, I sprinkle them in sometimes, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, I'm serious and then bam, bad joke. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And look what difference that made. It just brightened up the photo. You went from like, you know, winter in Detroit, boom, you're in Miami, okay? <laughs> this is what we just did with this curves layer. And then what we're gonna do is go on over to the blue. And I'm bringing this all the way back. So we're just adding a little bit more blue to the photo and we're using that same curves layer. We're doing this all, all on the same curves layer. Don't want to make it too much. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. And we're keeping this to 100. Next, what we want to do is go on over to layer, new adjustment layer, and then gradient map. This one, you don't have to do this step, but I don't know, it just adds a little bit extra to the picture. So literally what I did is I just went to a red to green gradient. And then I went from normal to saturation. And look, you guys, look at this. It's like we're back in like the 60s, 70s. I don't, I don't know what this is. So I just lowered the opacity to about 7. And let me just zoom in real quick so you guys can see this. It just adds in a little bit of color. 
And then what I did next is layer, new adjustment layer photo filter. And for this one, um, I was playing around with it. So instead of doing the warming filter, which is the default, what I did is I went to the deep yellow and then I just lowered the opacity to about 37. And that's it, it just added in that little bit of color. And let me show you guys, I'm gonna zoom, we're getting close here. We're all, we're getting to know each other today. Um, as you guys can see, even right here and in the skin tone, we we're just adding in that yellow. See how it was kind of blue? I'm trying to be like the Bill, Bill Nye of like photography editing. Oh, I'm not though, but I'm just, I guess I'm just trying to give you guys like a reason this time as to why I'm doing things. I'm not really a technical photographer, but there are some reasons why I add certain layers. So I just wanted to kind of explain that. Okay, so now that we've added the photo filter, one of the last steps will be to add selective color. So layer, new adjustment layer, and then selective color. Since we're already on the neutrals tab, what I'm going to do is just add in a little bit of black. And then go on over to the black tab and the only thing I'm going to be toggling here is the cyan. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but I'm probably not. <laughs> you can roast me in the comments, it's okay. I love this because it just adds in like this nice tone of green and blue. So then afterwards, we're gonna go on over to the yellows tab. Uh, this, this tab right here is going to make the biggest difference. As you can see, me already doing that. Let me show you guys, I'm gonna zoom out. I haven't even touched the rest of them and this is what it's doing, I think it just looks great. Um, and then what we're gonna do is just add a little bit of magenta and then yellows, we're gonna bump them up to about 40 and that's what it's doing so far. And then the last one is black and then I just added just up a little bit. So this is what we got so far. Now for this one, again, we're going to mask the model out and I already created a mask on the first one, so what I'm gonna do is just press Command until I see this little selection box. I'm gonna select the selection. That, okay, yeah, just try to be cool with that one. Just delete this mask and then reapply with the selection. Now, as you can see, it did the opposite of what we wanted to do. So again, just invert that mask and then everything but the model is selected. Um, I do have to just mask out the eyes. And then also I wanna just mask out her hair. And that is looking pretty good. If you want, like if you, if you want, you can, add, you can take your brush, set it to like 11% opacity and lightly go over the model to add just a little bit of color. So let me guys, let me show you guys a before and after. So that's before and that is after. I just love how this layer transformed so much of the picture. Um, one last thing I'm gonna do is just add a curves layer. And I'm setting this from normal to luminosity just to add a little bit of brightness. You don't have to add this layer if you don't want to, but. I like adding this in as a, as like a final layer. So there it is. Oh my God, that looks so good. I'm proud of myself. Okay, so let me show you guys the full before and after for the color edit. This is before and this is after. And then we're gonna show you guys, we, we as in just me, uh, I'm gonna show you guys a full before and after. So that is before and that's after. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this portrait retouch and color edit. Let me know what you guys think below in the comments. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching.